So now let's work on the fabric flap. First of all, you will get together with all the uh, materials of the tutorial this uh, template for the flap that we are going to create. I want you to print it out at its actual size and then to make sure that it's of the correct size you will measure that the square that you have on the template really measures one square inch. Then you will cut the template out Okay. Now you will need two pieces of the fabric and I'm using um, cotton fabric. Uh, the pieces will have to measure about 12 by 9 inches and you can work either with the same fabric or you can um, choose two patterns or colors or prints that match the colors of the paper collection that you are working with. I thought that this uh, violet cotton will work well with the Prima Designer paper from the lavender collection. You will also need a 12 by 9 inch of fusible interlining. And the thinner the interlining is, the better. We need it to be really thin and you know that it's fusible as it has those tiny 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 dots of glue on one side of the interlining. This polka dot fabric will be the top of my fabric flap and the plain fabric I will use on the inside of the flap. Now I need to fuse both of these together. I will put my fabric with the printed side facing down and I will take the interlining with the uh, glue facing down as well. I will put the sandwich then on um, this little ironing board that I have here and I will press them together using the iron and I will not iron straight on top of the interlining well I will do it through the um, plain printing paper now we will take the template and we will position it somewhere in the center of the um, fabric piece that we have so that we'll have around uh, half of an inch um, till the edge of the fabric uh, from the template itself to the left and to the right side and then what I like to do is this I will just take a piece of the double-sided tape and I will apply it to the template and then I will attach the template to the interlining like so. Now it will not move anywhere and I will be able to use my, well I'm using just a pencil for tracing the template on the interlining. For the straight lines it may be better to use the ruler and for the curved side you will already have to uh, trace it using only your hand and a pencil making sure that the paper stays flat against the surface and you really go along the very edge of the paper template. Okay, great. This is just a mark where the uh, buttonhole needs to be, but we will talk about it later. Now I will take 
my template off. And next what I do is this. I will take my fabric scissors and I will cut about three eighths of an inch away from the guideline that I have. Okay, I will leave the curved side for later. I will cut the excess here and here. Now, you can use the zigzag scissors or if you don't have them, you can just cut exactly as you've cut here using your plain scissors and then making a fringed edge like so. I will use my zigzag scissors for cutting the excess fabric on this side. Okay. Now I need to think about the way of embellishing the flap and it's something which is completely optional if you don't feel uh, comfortable using your uh, sewing machine you don't have to do that and only preparing a simple flap will be challenging enough for you if you're quite new to uh, sewing but if you're not and you want to uh, make your flap look more interesting you can uh, decide whether you want to embellish it with some more um, lace or appliques or things like that so for example I want to use this applique on my flap so I will now see first where well where I want it to be and let's see if I'm putting it correctly okay so something like this and now I will clip it with the secure pins to the fabric so that I know that it doesn't move from its place and now I will use my sewing machine for stitching it down to the paper flap. I'm doing this, I'm doing it at this stage because uh, I want to conceal all the, um, all the threads and everything that will be seen on the back side before attaching this whole piece to the uh, second layer of fabric. Okay, I've stitched the appliques down to the fabric and here are the stitches on the back side. So now I will pull the threads to the back side of the fabric and I will tie the knots. I have these uh, glass beads that I want to put inside um, the centers of the flowers so I'll take a few of them and I'll take my needle with the thread I tie the knot at one end of the thread maybe I should make it double okay now I will stitch some of those beads to the fabric in the centers of my flowers like that 
I don't have to bother about the back side because everything will be covered. Okay, now once I'm finished and look how pretty it is now, I will just tie a knot at the back of the fabric and I will cut the excess thread off. Now when you do that, it's important not to pull the thread because you want your fabric flap to stay flat, as flat as possible. Okay, now we need to attach that second layer of fabric. And if, well in my case it's I think it's not important to which side exactly I will be stitching this onto, but in your case you need to lay the face of the fabric to the face of the fabric. Now I will attach both of these together so that they stay safely connected. I will use the pins just in a couple of places. I think should be enough and let's make sure that the fabric is flat. Before taking that to the sewing machine once again I will make the marks on this side of the flap. You will stitch this in your sewing machine from this mark all the way around to this mark. This is what you have to do now, of course, following the line of your template while doing so. Okay, we have that done and you can see where exactly I've stitched two of the fabric layers. Now I backstitched in the beginning of my sewing and at the end of my sewing so I can just cut off the excess threads and I can of course already remove both of the pins. Now we will once again use the scissors for uh, trimming the excess fabric off. I'm leaving about one eighth or maybe more of an inch away from the seam. Okay, so on this curved edge, I will once again use my zigzag scissors. But if you don't have the zigzag scissors, let me show you what you do. You cut once again using your plain scissors, the axis of the second layer of the fabric, and then you go along those uh, cut lines that you've created before, if you did, and you make the cuts like that at every one eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Now we are almost finished with our flap, so you will use the opening that we've left for turning this whole thing out and I like to use some chopsticks for doing that. You can use either chopsticks or you know the opening is large enough for you to be able to turn it out uh, using just your fingers. But now when you need 
to give the flap its initial shape and you need all those corners to look really nice you can use the chopsticks definitely for pulling all those corners out oops sorry i was out of frame okay like that and here i will also kind of pull it using the chopsticks and pull it out okay and this is what we've got let's make sure that all the corners have been worked on with the chopsticks Okay, now this opening that we have here, we will just press it straight. And then once we sew all the flap to the uh, chipboard purse, it will no longer be important whether it's closed or not. So what I'll do now is I will once again take my mini ironing board I'm kind of stretching it and pulling it to the sides and then I'm ironing on the inside of the opening and on top as well now I can even spritz it a little bit with water and once again hot press I will add another stitching line along the very edge of the flap starting from this corner like that and finishing in this corner and this will just give a little bit uh, of an accent and will add a finishing uh, touch to the flap like this and now i will once look how it changed its look it looks much better with another uh, sewing along the edge so now I will once again pull the threads to the back of the fabric flap and I will tie the knots. Okay, now everything from now on depends on your imagination and creativity. I thought it would be nice to uh, make a buttonhole and use a fabric covered button for um, for this project if you do not know how to make the buttonhole using your sewing machine you should think about some other way of adding a closure to this piece this can be uh, maybe a simple button that you will stitch uh, stitch down to the flap and then maybe you can make something like a loop which will be connected to the chipboard base of the purse. Um, and this will be the way that it will close. When you will add the loop, think about the placement for that loop, where exactly it needs to be. Or uh, maybe something else you can add. There are these... Uh, snap fasteners that you could also use but um, all that you need to think about it before you start to create the flap and before you start to cover the chipboard purse with the designer paper I will right now uh, make a buttonhole for the fabric covered button that I will show you how to create because once again maybe you will um, learn something new and interesting about a certain tool that you 
haven't used before. So let me show that to you. Um, once there was the tool called Ita from Imaginus, and this is how it looks like. It was used for uh, creating fabric or paper covered breads or metal buttons and stuff like that. So if you have the eye top, you can use that, of course, for uh, creating the fabric covered button. If you don't have it, there is this other tool. This is how it looks. There is a silicone a cap and a plastic, hard plastic cap. And this is the tool. With its help, you can um, snip closed um, the metal button. And here are the daddies that I will use. This is how they are called, daddies. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Uh, so I like to um, add a layer of felt underneath the fabric so that the fabric will not be the only one that will cover the metal base of the button because then it's completely flat and it's not it doesn't look dimensional as dimensional as I want it to look so the uh, daddies that I'm using here are um, well three quarters of an inch something like that and in millimeters that will be 18 18 millimeters wide okay and there is that other part of the button so I took a little piece of felt now using my pencil I will trace the button on that piece of felt and I will cut it out Okay, and then I will glue it down straight to that metal cap of my future button. I will use just a little amount of glue and then I will center that uh, felt piece on top. Okay, like that. Now we will need, of course, the fabric itself and I took the same uh, color of the fabric as I've used for the for the flap now that i'm thinking about it maybe it would be better to use the um to use this color for creating the button so i want i've already uh, scribbled here a circle which is about uh, three eighths of an inch larger in radius than the button itself so I will now maybe cut it out and then use that as my template doesn't have to be perfect I just have to know where exactly I need to cut now I will do this I will take that silicone cap and I will try to center my fabric piece on top then I will put the button with the felt on top as well and I will press those tiny pieces of fabric inside the part of the button. Now I will take that second half, I will place it on top, I will try to center it and then I will take this little piece and I will put it on top like that and I will just press and then you will hear a certain click. That means that your button is assembled so you can take it out and look how pretty it is really nice and thick and dimensional
the size of the buttonhole will depend on the size of the button that uh, you want to attach to the flap. So I'm once again um, folding it in half to find the center. And I will position my button here. Then I have this <clears throat> disappearing ink marker that I will use for marking where I want the button hole to begin. And I think the rest will be done for me by my sewing machine. Okay, now I only need to cut the opening for the button and I have there a blob of ink that will disappear later so please don't mind that okay I will trim those fabric thread off. Great, so the button will be here. Okay, so now let's get back to the um, to the purse. Oh, by the way, you can add, if your sewing machine uh, allows that, you can add some uh, more um, embellishing touches to the flap. Uh, I think I will do that. I will add this kind of stitching along the curved edge of the flap and then to each one of them I will add um, the seed beads once again. So we have our flap prepared and now we can stitch it straight to the chipboard. So you have those uh, corners that will serve as your guide. Um, as for where exactly to align the flap and what I like to do I add just a bit of well here I use fabric glue but it's not important what kind of glue you can use plain tacky glue as well now you can align the flap there glue it down and use your sewing machine once again in order to make the uh, stitching right along the very edge of the flap at a distance which will be the same as the sewing that we've applied along the outer edge of the flap so um, what can be the alternative way of attaching it these could be uh, little breads of course or this could also be the fabric glue strong fabric glue that you will apply to this section of the flap from this corner to that corner to all this section okay and you can glue it down without using your sewing machine. I just like the look of the stitching and this is what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I've stitched that to the chipboard. Now I pulled the threads to the back side of my stitching and I will trim those threads off. Now I can continue to assemble the purse. I need to mark where my button will be. So I will pretend that the purse is closed. I will align that flap along the corners here on the left and right. Then I will make a mark with my fingernail because I think this is the best way and then I will mark 
the place to punch out the hole for the for the button. I'll punch a hole out there. Then I'll take my button and I think I will use just uh, some cotton cotton thread or how it's called cotton twine I will do like do it like that I will string it through the loop in the button and I will tie a knot then I will string both of the threads in the into the hole and now from this side I will simply glue down a piece of paper. I will punch out a piece of paper. And now it doesn't have to be a patterned paper, just uh, cardstock is fine. I will apply a good amount of glue to the surface of that paper circle. And now before gluing it down on top of the uh, thread here, I want to pull my button just a little bit in order uh, to have a certain length to the thread. And then I will press on top of the paper to make sure that I'm gluing it down. Okay, now the tails will be cut off, but not up to the very edge of the circle. Leave a little bit of them on the sides and glue them down to chipboard. Tacky glue will be enough for this. It bonds fabric quite well. Next we will work with uh, two of the side panels which are left right now. They are the only one left uh, to complete the purse. So uh, we will attach them in the following way. Two of the hinges that you have uh, from the left, you will work with the hinge which is attached to the inside of the base trapezium shape. You will take the backing off the hinge and then the side panel you will attach it along the very edge of the trapezium and you will attach it really close to the to this piece you will keep it in a standing position against the working surface and once you are sure that everything is aligned and the corners at the top and at the bottom meet you will glue the hinge down then you will put this piece you will take it to the edge of your table so that well let me show you as if this is the edge of your table so you will put it like that along the edge and then you will burnish on top of that hinge. This is what you'll have. This piece is now attached from one side. Then you will take the second panel and you will do the same. Now you have this construction which looks like this. Okay, now let's continue with this side. We need to remove the backing from, from um, this half of the hinge. 
which is closer to the panel with the opening and then while you keep that section straight against the working surface you will burnish the hinge and then you will put it like that and you will use your bone folder to burnish even more like that okay now we have our purse looking like that now you will take your pattern paper with the cut out opening and you will apply glue to it to the back side of it and you will glue it down to um, this area please pay attention at this area around the opening and don't forget apply glue um, pretty close to the opening itself when you have that done take this whole piece center it and glue down paying attention that you have um, perfectly aligned border here at the top and all the rest should follow now use your bone folder to burnish on top and to secure this piece on the project to attach this part to the base you need to do pretty much the same but you need to pay attention at the position of all the hinges that we have here and uh, before I explain to you how each one of the hinges should be positioned first I want you to cut at an angle this short hinge which is attached to the bottom of our purse because I can see that the paper crinkles when we try to assemble it so this is what I want to do to cut little pieces off at an angle and now let me explain to you about the sandwich so first you will wrap in those short hinges this hinge will naturally be um, inside and the hinges here you also need to take to take inside so okay like that two of the short hinges you fold in and two of the long hinges you then fold in as well and when you lift this section of the purse the side panels should should get in between the side hinges that you have here and here okay so before doing that sandwich please take off the backing from the paper hinge and keeping your you will now once again take care of all the hinges you will keep the purse in a standing position and you will attach this side hinge to the panel to the large panel of the purse and now with your bone folder you still can reach all the way to the bottom and burnish that hinge properly okay now this is almost assembled now we can still keep the purse a little bit open so this is the good time 
to apply glue to the second piece of the designer paper that we prepared before I've applied the glue and now I can glue it down to this panel now excuse me for for the limited view of what I'm doing but I'm doing the same as I did for this panel I'm centering the paper piece and paying attention that here I have a straight border from this edge. Now I take a bone folder and burnish this paper piece like that. Okay, and this is what we have now. Don't forget about the hinges and the order of how they should be attached. Okay. Now let's let's now take care of the outside hinges that we have. If you did everything right, you will see that this side panel kind of covers the larger uh, panels of the purse and this is how you, the corner should look like this piece will be kind of on top of the longer one okay so this is how you need to position it and let's start from one side first but it's not that it should be positioned like that so that if you flip it to the side you can still see the uh, edge of this chipboard panel okay so you will hold it this way you will remove the backing from the remaining half of the hinge and this is the side that I'm working on right now I will apply a bit of glue here in between the hinges on the very edge of the chipboard and now I will start to align the pieces so I will align them like this I want you to pay attention okay that in between two of those pieces I still have kind of a small uh, rectangular shape and the same thing from the other side okay so once I have my top and bottom corners aligned I can press the paper down and then burnish the hinge in order to secure it properly on the chipboard surface now let's do the same from this side I will remove the backing I will add just a bit of glue to the very seam between the chipboard and the paper hinge Okay, and then I will just fold this paper piece and glue it down to chipboard and burnish, of course. Don't press too hard, or if you do press, at least support the whole construction with your hand. From the inside okay like this now the same thing goes for the other side now we can attach the inside hinges and for that we need to remove the backing from the score tape I will use the poking tool because it's easier to do it that way 
and while you take off the backing from the longer hinge make sure that it stays at the bottom behind the short hinge and not uh, some other way so you will start to remove the backing from the top and you will use your poking tool to remove it to take it off all the way till the bottom and then first you will burnish the hinge using your finger and then using your bone folder let's do the same on the other side I'll start from the top and I will then pull on that backing and I will take it off completely will burnish the hinge using my finger and then I will keep the purse on the working surface flat with the side panel and I will burnish the hinge using the bone folder now let's do the same with the smaller hinges I hope you can see what I'm doing with the same poking tool I'm taking off the backing then burnishing with my finger and then with the bone folder like that okay the same on the other side now we need to reinforce um, the edges with the hinge here and to cover the edges here on top for doing that you will need four hinges which will measure the same but first I want you to make to take a ruler and to measure what is the size of the hinges that you need in your case so in my case it will be uh, two and five eighths of an inch at the bottom and two and three, even slightly more I think no two and five eighths of an inch at the top uh, might be that in your case it will be a bit smaller or maybe a bit longer than that in any case before you cut the hinges I want you to uh, measure everything so you will cut the hinges to the size they are one inch uh, in width and uh, two and five eighths of an inch in length I will now re remove the backing and while I keep the hinge like this at a straight angle I will start to position it and then I will glue it down And then you see here it doesn't look nice so I will take my scissors and I will trim the axis so that it looks like this okay and here I think we'll we will still be able to see a bit of that chipboard no matter how perfect you want this to look like it's hand it's a handmade project so uh, there is nothing to do with it sometimes you need to make some adjustments on the way so I will take my white marker and I will color well I think marker is not opaque enough as the gel pen so I will use the gel pen in order to slightly color those peaking areas of the chipboard from this side and 
on the opposite side as well. And now I can continue attaching my hinge. So I will take off the backing first. I will add some liquid glue into the seam and then I will pull it towards myself and I will glue the hinge down securely burnishing it with my bone folder okay and then I will do the same on the other side check if I need to trim anything to make it look better okay on this side as well Okay, so we took care of the bottom uh, bottom section of the purse. Now we'll get to the top. So here what we will have to do is the same. But in order to be able to uh, slide one half of this hinge inside the purse, I will cut it like this on one half okay and this will allow me to easily fold one half of that hinge inside the purse inside the box that I'm building so I'll remove the backing from one half of the hinge I will align it from the right and left of the purse. I will stick this down, burnish properly. Now I will remove the backing from the second half of the hinge. We'll add a bit of glue uh, into the seam, into the fold however you want to call this and then I will glue it down from the outside burnishing once again and doing the same thing from the other side okay like this now we will cover the side panels from outside with the designer paper and for that we will need two pieces which measure two and three eighths of an inch by seven inches. You will apply them to the sides of uh, the purse using whatever glue that you want to. Okay, like this. You also can measure the bottom section and cut the paper of the needed size and glue it down to this section here so it will be seven inches by two and three eighths as well okay like this burnish I hope you like the result so far. We will mat the inside uh, panels of the purse later on once we are done attaching the, uh, the handle and we will create um, the handle right now. Get to creating the handle for the purse and 
after once the handle is attached we will be able to mat the side panels of the purse with the designer paper so for creating the handles you will need two pieces of cardstock and they will measure uh, they will measure 12 inches long by 1 16th smaller than one and a half inch these two pieces of cardstock I want you to take a cardstock that you are sure about that it is flexible enough it's not cracking when you um, when you score it and fold it I am using the um, American Crafts cardstock the heavyweight textured cardstock and it's of a white color so I'm putting it on the scoreboard and I will score it at half an inch and then at one inch and the second strip I'm scoring the same way and now we can see that one outer flap is uh, really half an inch wide and the second out outside flap is um, narrower than half an inch so we will start folding our uh, strip of paper from that narrower flap on the paper strip it doesn't overlap the score line 1 16th of an inch that we did not cut to get to one and a half is why the inside flap here will not overlap the square line and you will be able to fold everything without any problem and then take each one of them and remember the uh, order of the folds that this one for example goes first because it's narrower and then the wider one covers it on top so now I will just apply the glue to the narrower uh, flap first and then I will apply the glue to the uh, fold on the other side and once again I will run my bone folder over it to make sure that everything is securely glued and this strip is ready now we'll do the same with the second strip here both of the paper strips are ready and we will need to cut um, to cut a piece from each one of them and that piece should be um, let me tell you two and three quarters of an inch two and three quarters of an inch from each of the strip you cut off like this okay so these pieces are two and three quarters of an inch long and the remaining piece is nine and a quarter okay so these two pieces we will connect together we'll overlap them uh, at a quarter of an inch approximately so I'll apply glue to the end of one strip and I will connect it to the second one like that okay and I will leave that to dry okay. now let's talk about these ones you will first shape them with your fingers and curve them and then you will fold them in half like that make sure that 
you curve with this side facing down so that the nicer and more beautiful side of the strip will be facing up okay like that so we have now two pieces that will be connected to the D-rings and then to the handle. So our D-ring should be um, wider than the paper strip. Paper strip. So I will take two uh, D-rings, which are once again. Let me tell you, three quarters of an inch on their long side. And I will use them in order to attach the paper handle to our purse. I want to work on this paper strip just a little bit. And I will take my uh, corner rounder. I will use the side, which is one eighth of an inch. And I will chomp the corners just a little bit because I don't like that square look of the ends and then I will just work on them a little bit more with the sanding tool okay like this now I will slide the D-ring so that the rounded side will be facing out and the uh, straight side will be positioned inside the paper strip. And then I will add some more glue to this edge, but not all the way to the D-ring. And I will glue, I will seal this down. I will do the same with the second strip. Okay, like that. Now I will take my crocodile and I will take a pencil and I will mark a place for the hole that will be well slightly less than half an inch away from the edge and I'm trying to position it in the middle of the strip somewhere here and then I will punch a hole like that and like that okay and I will put these aside right now as I will continue working on the long handle okay so what we want to do first is this we want to slide it through the d-ring and we want to leave about let me tell you well about one and three quarters of an inch from this side one and well, even more is okay. One and seven eighths of an inch. From one and three quarters to one and seven eighths of an inch. If you leave, that's fine. So you just fold it. Measure how long is the tail that you left here on this side. And once again, you use the glue in order to seal this down. Okay, and you do the same 
on the other side. Slide it in and before you really press with your fingers and create that fold measure that the tail that you leave is about one and seven eighths of an inch or one and three quarters around that Okay, now I will once again add the glue and glue this down. You can try the handle on the purse and see if you want maybe your handle to be shorter, but I think that this length is really optimal. Okay, because we want the handle later on to be able to slide back and allow us to open the flap of the purse and get the album out of there okay so now we will continue to work on this piece we will need the hemp cord that we will uh, wrap the handle with this is the hemp cord that I'm using there is no thickness stated on the packaging, but if you let me just for a second to measure how thick it is, so it will be about three thirty twos, three thirty twos of an inch or in millimeters it will be about three three millimeters in thickness okay now so you take the hemp cord you don't cut anything you just fold the hemp cord in two and you position it on top of the uh, piece that you want to wrap with the hemp cord and then the end with the loop you leave loose and you get to the edge to the end where both of the uh, ends meet and while keeping both of the strings of the cord like that with your finger in the center of the handle the paper handle you will start to use the long tail that goes to the rest of the quartz pool only and you will start to wrap it around the handle tight loop after loop keeping it close and tight and nice together snug together is a better word and you will keep on wrapping it around the paper like that and while you do that try to position these two strings of the cord in the center of the paper strip and then just keep on keep on wrapping Till you reach the end okay I almost got here to the end you get this um, this you get to this situation that you've almost trapped everything and now you can see that from both of the ends it uh, leaves the equal spacing till the d-ring from the hemp cord itself so i'm still keeping it tight with my fingers and i will cut the cord off i no longer need that and this piece i will loop through the uh, 
through the loop that I have there. And now while I'm holding it from this side, I will start to pull slowly, slowly. I will start to pull from this side of the tail and this way I will get the little tail from the top to hide under the rest of the cord okay so I will be pulling it till I hide all of it like that and then I will cut from this end I will cut the tail of the cord flush with the loops that I have here okay so the handle is ready and we can attach it now to the purse you can try and straighten the loops if any of them are wonky now we will take a pair of brads and we'll start to attach the handle to the purse. Uh, I'm using these brads with enamel, enameled cap or head, uh, depends how you want to call it. And uh, they are quite long. Uh, here the tails are quite long. Before attaching it to the purse, I want to uh, color it just a little bit with gesso. This step is optional, but this is something that I would like to do. I'm using this uh, gesso from Studio by Claudine Helmuth. It's a very old bottle of gesso that I have. You can use acrylic paint instead if you want to. So I'm just dipping my sponge brush in the gesso, lightly dipping it. Okay, and coloring the handle slightly like this then I will of course uh, leave it to dry for a while okay from the other side as well and I'm coloring it because all the um, purse is quite soft in colors so even the natural color of the cord that I used here for wrapping the handle is too bold for the rest of the look of the purse so now while that strip is drying I will take my project and I will mark the place for uh, for the holes to attach the handle and they will be about a one and a half of an inch away from the top edge of the purse maybe one and a quarter of an inch well let me see one and three eighths of an inch away okay so I will mark the place let's see that it's really in the center okay one and a quarter one and a quarter yeah that's fine so here will be one hole and on the other side the same thing one and three eighths of an inch Okay, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, okay, great. So the crocodile obviously will not get there, so I'm using a simple awl for poking that hole. Like that, and like that, okay, wide enough to allow the tails of the breads to get in and now I will take the breads 
and take the handle oops okay let's see where is okay that way I want it to be so I put the bread through the hole and then I attach the whole piece to the album and I open the tails of the bread from the inside of the purse it would be of course better to kind of flatten them they're inside so I will use this tool that I have here for pressing on the tails of the bread inside the purse I will do the same from this side pay attention that I'm not gluing the handles to the purse now I'm only attaching them with the breads and I want them to move on the base of the purse like that so that only the bread will hold the whole handle okay like this now when I want to open the the purse I will just well we will shape the the handle later but if I want to open the purse I will just slide this back and I will open the flap and then I will get the access to the uh, contents of the purse okay and as you could mention I've already attached uh, the frame here to the opening on the front of the purse this is something that you will need uh, to check with the dies that you have in your stash and uh, you will have to pick the one that looks good in terms of size and design and then you will just uh, use the template that you've cut out before to cut the opening in that uh, die cut shape as well and then you will glue it down on top let's mat the inside of the purses panels and for that we'll need two pieces of paper that will measure two and a quarter by by well slightly smaller than seven inches would be fine here I have both of the pieces so I will apply glue and after the glue is applied you will slide it into the purse and you will make sure that here at the top you have a straight border okay and then you will either use your hand or a bone folder if you can slide your hand with the bone folder inside the purse or you can use a long wide ruler in order to burnish on that piece of the designer paper and make sure that it's sticking down to the chipboard panel okay so I think the purse is ready and what's left to do with it now is to embellish it to your taste and liking and then we will get to uh, creating the matching album to go inside the purse.